Right, okay, so I have just literally spent uh, well, best part of a day, I suppose, testing the new range of Strixon products, and that'd be from the two sets of irons, the driver, and the driving irons, I suppose you'd call them, although they are available, these uh, ZU, and I always forget, there's so many different names for these things. ZU85 is the new range of, I don't know what they reference them as, because they're making them through from six iron through to two iron, but in this instance, this video is all about looking at the driving iron capabilities and a bit of a comparison because the one thing whilst I was hitting um, the ZU85 was that it started to, again, people who uh, know the channel know I'm a big fan of this type of club and something that I already carry in the bag, which is the ZU65, the uh, previous version uh, of the Strix and Iron. But I've also liked the Callaway, uh, and again, I'm going to have to go through these names and look at them. This is the UT... Um, I don't know, driving iron, whatever you want to call it. And then we've got the Gapper range of clubs as well uh, from Taylor So I'm going to put these three up in a head to head. In a lot of respects, they're very, very different clubs. So it's a slightly different odd head to head. But I think it's the type of club that if you're looking to take something like this from the T uh, in tight par fours, then these are the kind of options that are open to you. And like I said, there's similarities but there are also some differences as well but maybe we can see that in the test that i do i'm not going to talk too much about the individual clubs because i've reviewed each of these in their own right um i'm going to use the numbers that uh, from the zu85 that i've just achieved uh, an hour or so ago for the uh, independent review of that product on its own so we're going to start off hitting some of these two uh, others and then I'll, I'll talk about my thoughts on the the differences and perhaps the um why you might choose one and not the other and that again will be very much depending on what it is you're looking for i'm not going to hit the data i'm going to record is going to be from this kind of uh, this fluffier piece of turf if you like i'm not going to tee these up i'm going to take it off the ground because i also like the idea of the versatility of this club not only just to be able to play it from the tee but also to play it uh, from it lies on the fairway first of all the gapper clubs we're using the three and we're using the, the Gappa 3, it's got 18 degrees worth of loft. It's the chunkiest version. It's got a lot of meat around the back of it. It's, I think, something that will appeal to some and not all. Uh, again, the looks got a bit of a, I would say, got a bit of a hammer in terms of looks, in terms of the comments I read. Not a lot of people like this one. Graphite shaft in it, this KBS uh, hybrid shaft, uh, 80 grams stiff. And um, I'm going to try and hit some golf shots and give you my thoughts on it. Sat behind the ball, like I said, I think this is very much down to a personal preference as to whether or not you might like this or not. It offers up a lot of meat. It tends to, you tend to think you're going to get. That's a solid start. You tend to think you're going to get a bit of help from this one. Like I said, just by the sheer meat that's packed into this club, it looks powerful. The noise on this is very much more, I would say, of a hybrid type of sound rather than of an iron sound. So again, something quite different. I certainly had a good old start with the two strikes that I've hit there. I'll hit some more with this. Um, like I said, even judging by those two, a fairly low penetrating ball flight. I'm expecting it to be fairly low spinning, but the two balls that I've hit off and previous use of this, I've tested this on the course. This is a low ball flight. We'll go next into the Callaway because it's probably the most from one end of the spectrum to the other in terms of the differences, how these things differ in appearance as much as anything else. This uh, Callaway forged iron, and that's uh, one thing to mention, first of all, this is a forged head club. It's a very slim profile. It's very compact. It's very much a traditional old style three iron. Um, there's not a lot of meat in there. Again, this is going to be appealing to people who have got confidence in their ball striking capabilities with these type of irons it's very much more compact you don't see a lot of meat behind the ball at all this is very much like i said almost blade like in its looks so will appear to certainly i would think the better player i would say first of all let's have a look what it does in terms of difference in feel with the forged decent ball strike again that is i do like this type of club and again i don't think they appeal to everybody um, but for whatever reason, 
it's uh, they suit my eye they suit my game i don't know i do like to take this type of club like i said off the tee and again a decent strike there um totally different feel totally different sound Just pull that one a little bit down the left. I mean, the thing to notice straight away, like I said, there's a major, major difference between what you might like behind the ball. Like I said, this is going to appeal to a totally different eye. Uh, but that's a decent ball as well. Why can't I do this on the fairway? Um, that is, again, much softer sound, much softer feel. Uh, stunning golf club. Play with this out on the golf course as well. Early part of this year when it came out and... Uh, the feel out of this is totally different to that of the Gapper Club. I would say that less room for error in terms of assistance, forgiveness, whatever you want to use in terms of terminology with that thing. If you get it wrong, you're going to get it wrong, I'm afraid. Um, maybe, like I said, a lot more help out of the um, out of the Gapper Club. And then the last one that I'm going to look at is this um, Strixon ZU85, the newest release just come out in the last few weeks. Um, if we just look, and I'll try and get a close-up if I remember to take this photo beforehand, before I leave today. Uh, just pure width of sole unit on these two. Um, almost half an inch thicker on the, um, on the ZU85. Thing to mention with the ZU85 is the numbers have been achieved there. Three iron has 20 degrees worth of loft. And again, I know a lot of you might pick up and say, well, this is not a fair head-to-head. -head. I don't see this as a competition as to a winner or a loser in this i try to do these videos head-to-head -head comparisons to give you an idea of the differences between them and then maybe look at performances and how the performances differ so yeah arguably this should be 18 degrees worth of loft to make this a fair a fair head-to-head -head if we were running it as a competition i suppose um but yeah 20 degrees worth of loft on this different profile altogether again than the two we've just looked at much thicker and visible top line in the sense of looking at an iron down at a thick chunky iron and then you have the meat on the back of the club that sits down and low behind the ball which again in the thick sole unit tends to give you it's a lot more confidence inspiring than what you would be looking for from the um from the the callaway product anyway i've hit this already but we'll hit a few more on camera as of just to keep the three in my mind as to how they differ Now straight away, first ball out, and we talked about the fairness of the head-to-head, -head, if you like, then that is a lot um, higher launching club, two degrees higher in terms of the loft, so you would expect that, and that's the first noticeable thing. So maybe these numbers you're gonna have to... Oh, it's beautiful, that. I mean, I actually, oddly enough, and I'd be interested to see in the numbers where they're landing, they don't seem that different in terms of where they're landing. The ball flight is completely different between the three, and it looks to me like the flatter ball flight is coming from the uh, the Gapper product. Um, for me, this three, it's got it's a lot easier in terms of launch. It seems a lot more. Um, I always use this word forgiveness, assistance. That one come out the bottom done okay in where it's finished but come out the bottom there wasn't the best strikes that uh, out of all that i've just hit on camera um just tends to again just gives you the impression and it may be incorrect the impression that it's got that little bit more forgiveness that little bit more of assistance it certainly packs a punch in there so for me you've almost got a combination of the two products there you've got a bit of meat that's in the gapper club um, in terms of and a bit more bulk in terms of a bit of confidence inspiring but you've got the forged head that is in the Callaway product. So mix them both together and you've got the best of both worlds, I think. So I'll have a look at the numbers, but at the moment I'm really liking the way the ZU85 performs overall for an average golfer. Let's hit one more ball because I'm not finishing. I hate to finish on a bad one. And like I said, that was a bit thin. Let's see what we can do. A lot better. Right, that's golf balls hit, data collected, and I didn't get a chance to finish off the video yesterday, so here we are, and I'm gonna get st straight into the numbers, starting off with the tailor-made product. Here they come in front of you now. 
Okay, so ball speeds on this one, 130 on average. I certainly flew off the club face this thing. 13 and a half degrees in terms of launch. 2899 spin, peak height 26, 205 carry. Just very quickly, just want to talk about ball speeds. Yes, it was very fast off the face. It launched, for me, uh, varied a little bit. So 12, well, 11.9, right up to 15.6. So very much dependent, obviously, a lot to do with my strike, but there was variables in there. Uh, spin fairly consistent around the three number. And again, peak height had variables, so that 19 yards right the way up to 33 height, 33 yards in peak height. So ball flight changed quite a lot. Uh, and 205 on average in terms of overall carry. So in terms of overall carry, average wise, exactly where I expect it to be. This is a club for me that isn't around that 200 yard mark. And uh, for me, a little bit clicky in terms of sound on a tailor-made product. Confidence inspiring, sat behind a ball. And like I said, anything around that 200 yard mark, I'd be happy to pick this club up. Now then, we talked about variables between the three clubs and the main one being the amount of loft that differed um, and also perhaps the shaft type. But uh, I'm gonna throw up straight away now the ZU85 numbers, which was exactly the same loft and exactly the same profile, I would say, as this tailor-made gap up club. Okay, so 126 ball speed. So a lot slower in terms of ball speed off the club face uh, than the tailor-made product. 16 degree in terms of average launch angle. So a lot higher in terms of launch. 2945, really good spin number. 30 yard peak height and 200 yard carry. Now again, just going through the analysis quite quick, I think it was very consistent in terms of ball speed. If you took the 118 out of the equation, then it's very, very consistent up there, sort of 126 to 130 ball speeds. It launched visibly higher than the TM product. And average at 16, but it was sort of consistently, what is it, 15 up to 18 degrees in terms of launch. And again, that'll be very much down to the delivery, how I've delivered the club at impact. Um, and peak height, it, as you can see, a lot higher, but a lot consistently in terms of ball flight higher. And the number in terms of carry distance, again, take that one ball out with 183, which is a bad one thrown in there. They were all consistent in and around, once again, in and around that 200 yard um, carry distance. But they were achieved in different ways in terms of ball flight. And once again, their differences that you need to understand what it is that you want from the club itself, what are you looking for? Why Why would you want to use this type of utility club? Anyway, before we go into that, third and final club was quite a bit different. It was the blade-like construction of the Callaway x Forge utility club. It had, it was um, lower lofted in terms of 18 degrees and it had a steel shaft. So yes, lots of variables for a comparison video. But I think in, in the end, it turned out to be a real good way of further highlighting the differences between these three clubs. And I'll throw up the numbers for the Callaway club right now. Okay, so starting off ball speeds, 127 on average, 13.1 uh, launch, 2 seconds spin, 23 peak height and 199 carry. So again, go back through, averages, very consistent in terms of the average uh, ball speed at 127. Consistent in terms of ball flight, it was considerably lower, visibly considerably lower. I could see that, like I said, from the assessment when I was hitting the balls out there into the range, it was a lot more lower penetrating ball flight. Peak height was as low as 23 yards in height, so a lot different to the other two. Spin number was similar in around 3,000 and 199 carry. So once again, similar sort of yardage achieved, but in a different way with a totally different ball flight. And for me, really, the th differences between the three clubs are probably A, to do with your ability to control and use the type of club like the Callaway X-Forge. It will be limited it's certainly aimed at uh, the better player there's no doubt about that and i think at my level i would certainly when you hit that club that callaway x Force, it feels absolutely superb and there's no better feeling than hitting that type of club pure the problem is is how often would someone of my ability hit that ball pure compared to the two other products that are an option and perhaps offer quite a lot more assistance so the cat the tailor made product again for me, like I said, a little bit clicky in terms of sound, very confidence inspiring behind a ball. It's a big, big piece of meat stuck behind that ball. You don't really feel as though you can go wrong. And there's definitely some fast ball speeds coming off that club face. The thing I was probably disappointed with was the variables in, in terms of ball flight. Um, like I said, plenty of variables in my swing. So that's 
uh, no doubt a lot to do with the way uh, the performance was uh, that the, the data came out um, but yeah it did vary quite a lot in terms of ball flight then on to the um, ZU85 from Strixen and I think this is for me the real sort of winner in the sense that and like I said this isn't a competition uh, winner's the wrong word for something that I would choose out of the three personally at my level is one the, X, uh, the ZU85 offers a very very good feel very good sound not as good as the Callaway but very very close indeed and it has a lot more bulk behind the club behind the ball within that club head within the mass of the club head which was a little bit more confidence inspiring for me personally i think there's no doubt a bigger sweet spot there's no doubt more room for error and there's no doubt more assistance the one thing it got for me and why i choose it over the tm product is simply because of the consistency into two, two things really consistency in the ball flight but also how easy it was to achieve that ball flight it was high launching like i said on the video without being floaty it still fired it out there and like i said it's a great option it's a great option for me to have in the bag for off the tee and like i said no i'd be more than comfortable to take that off of a tight line on the fairway as well anyway these products have been on the market for uh, quite a while now some of these so every chance you might have tried them too and uh, that's the opinion i'm more interested in so uh, your thoughts and feedback would you buy any of these clubs if you did which one would it be um looks performance if you tried them where would you go would you agree with the average golfer or would you not as ever i love the comments down below thank you for watching this is the end it's friday evening it's the end of strix and week uh five videos on the trot this week and we've got plenty more to come next week so uh, keep watching and uh, as ever i will see you very soon